Every church should be charismatic, my dear brothers and sisters. Because the, the day the church was born, which it was charismatic. The day the church was born, people used the gift of tongue. The disciples used the gift of tongue. Apostles used the gift of tongue. And people were attracted to these. And that's how 3,000 people were baptized. The fear was consumed. The self-centeredness was consumed. Their image worries about future was consumed. And everything that was blocking them from coming in front of the public and profess the faith was consumed. My dear brothers and sisters, as we start this special preparation for the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost preparation, let us reflect about the Holy Spirit. Who is Holy Spirit? We need to know him personally. We know Holy Spirit is the third person in the Holy Trinity. And when we speak about Holy Spirit, we don't have a form in front of us. Maybe at the most we may think of a dove. Sometimes we think of fire, tongues of fire. Sometimes we think of Holy Spirit as a wind, wind. Sometimes we think of Holy Spirit as maybe oil, oil. So this is how we think of Holy Spirit because when we think of Heavenly Father, we can imagine a fatherly figure in front of us. When we think of Jesus, we know how Jesus looks like and we have an idea about Jesus. But when we think about Holy Spirit, we have no idea. And we know that Holy Spirit is a power and we know Holy Spirit comes in the form of dove. Holy Spirit comes in the form of fire. And Holy Spirit comes in the form of wind. And Holy Spirit also comes into you when you are anointed with the oil. So there are so many forms or so many symbols of the Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit is not a dove. Holy Spirit is not an, not a, an oil. Holy Spirit is not a wind. Not, Holy Spirit is not a fire. But Holy Spirit is a person. A person. A person with, with identity, with integrity, with every sense, a person, a third person of the Holy Trinity, third person in the Holy Trinity. So he's a person who wants to enter into an intimacy with you and me. Holy Spirit is a person who wants to communicate with us. Holy Spirit is a person who is in action here on earth. God in action on earth. Is called Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, these are the symbols of the Holy Spirit. Fire. What is the symbol of the fire? Fire consumes every dirt. Fire consumes everything. And all the, you know, when we have, um, maybe, when we clean the unnecessary things from our home, and we give fire to it, and clean the whole area. Fire cleans, cleans the place. So the same way, the Holy Spirit, it will consume and remove every uncleanness and cleanse the person. The same way, the water is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. What also cleanses you. What also gives you new life. What also gives you life for the plants and human beings. Without water, no human being, no, no living being can survive here on earth. So water is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So all these symbols shows the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. But they are not Holy Spirit. Water is not Holy Spirit. Dove is not Holy Spirit. Fire is not Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit has the characteristics of all these things. That is why when we speak about Holy Spirit in the Bible, we can see the Holy Spirit comes in all these kinds of forms. Because each time there is a meaning for it. When the Holy Spirit come upon the disciples in the upper room, it came in the form of fire. Because in the Old Testament, during the Pentecost day, they all receive, they saw the power, the Holy Spirit comes in fire in the Old Testament. Therefore, in the New Testament Pentecost, Holy Spirit came in the form of, form of fire. But at the same time, this fire has got another meaning. Because these are the disciples who are so frightened, so scared. They were hiding in an upper room. They were hiding from the public. They were hiding from the authorities. They were afraid to profess the faith. 
and they had self-centeredness and fear. But when the Holy Spirit came, they had a total change. What does it mean? That means when the Holy Spirit came upon them, all the unnecessary things in their body was consumed. The fear was consumed. The self-centeredness was consumed. Their image worries about future was consumed. And everything that was blocking them from coming in front of the public and profess the faith was consumed. And as a result, the disciples were hiding in the closed room. They came out into the open space and preached the gospel to the nations. And they were courageous because the Holy Spirit gave them power. And this is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Therefore, let us invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit in our personal life. And the Holy Spirit is going to come upon each and every one of you. Holy Spirit will never disappoint you. We need this Holy Spirit. We need this baptism in the Holy Spirit. Without which no Christian can survive here on earth. Without the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's thirst for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And let's thirst for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He will never disappoint you if you really thirst for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray in a special way for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let's all read this word of God. Acts the Apostles chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. We read like this. When the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and was three we read like this divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them my dear brothers and sisters the church is born on this day on Pentecost today how the church was born the church was born when the fire came like tongues of fire, violent wind. It was not just a small wind, a consoling wind or a just a, a breeze, but it was a hurricane. This is a powerful wind, a violent wind. Only on that place. And the fire came down like the tongues of fire and rested on each of them. And how did it manifest? Tongues, gift of tongue. My brothers and sisters, the church which is born is a charismatic church. The church which was born is a charismatic church and in the charismatic way the church was born. That is the original nature of the church is charismatic. Original nature of the origin of the church is charismatic. Therefore, only if you promote and if you invite the presence of the Holy Spirit, only if you are guided and led by the Holy Spirit, the church will grow. Because that's how the church is born. And that's how the first manifestation of the, fir the first church, with the gift of tongue, fire, windstorm, and the presence of God manifested in a mighty powerful way. Therefore, where there is these charisms executed, where there is this gift of tongue is used, and where there is fire of the Holy Spirit come down, the church will grow. The, the churches will be packed. And where these charisms are used, the Holy Catholic Church will flourish. Whether you like it or not, my dear brothers and sisters, somewhere some kind of wrong idea has entered into many members of the church that this, this using the charism is something wrong. That is coming from evil spirit. That is not the nature of the original church. The Holy Spirit wants everyone to promote the charisms and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the church should be charismatic. Every church should be charismatic. If not, the church will die. If not, the church will not flourish. If not, cathedrals and churches will be sold out. If not, the church will not move. 
Every church should be charismatic, my dear brothers and sisters, because the, the day the church was born, which it was charismatic. The day the church was born, people used the gift of tongue. The disciples used the gift of tongue. Apostles used the gift of tongue. And people were attracted to these. And that's how 3,000 people were baptized. Now people are not getting attracted because there is no power. There is no fire. There is no charisms. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray for a, a renew, renewal and a revival and a new Pentecost for each and every one of us in these 50 days of preparation. Let every house be an upper room. Every house where the people of God join in this live streaming be an upper room and everyone experience a Pentecost in each and everyone's house. It is going to happen. It is happening right now. Let's worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise, you, Father. Praise you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We, love you, Jesus. we glorify you, we glorify Jesus. You, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Let's read. For God did not give us for God, for God did, did not, not give us a spirit of cowardice a spirit of cowardice but rather but rather a spirit of power a spirit of power and of love and of love and a self discipline and self discipline praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters this spirit of uh, the holy spirit who comes inside of us will change us totally completely we know what happened to the disciples disciples were so afraid of the consequences of preaching the gospel standing for Jesus therefore they were hiding in a closed room they knew only one room and they were hiding there because that is the only safe place for them they have found and that is where the last supper was celebrated and that is where they used to come together. They were hiding in that room. Where there was fear. Where there was hiding. Where there was disappointment. When the Holy Spirit came. That place became a place of power. That place became a place of a new birth. New birth of the church. The same disciples especially Peter who denied Jesus three times in front of a servant girl just because he was afraid to go to the prison and he didn't want to be tortured by the soldiers he didn't want to lose his life therefore he saved his life by denying his master and the same Peter just some days ago around 50 days ago he denied Jesus three times just only a day, 50 days are passed. Now his whole attitude changed. After the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the same Peter was so covered and is so frightened. He is standing in front of thousands of people and preaching the gospel with, uh, with uh, conviction, fearless. And he preached the gospel and he challenged the Roman Empire. He challenged the Jewish authorities. He challenged the high priest and the Sanhedrin. And that's how the first church was born. More than 3,000 people got baptized. My dear brothers and sisters, we are receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, there will be a U-turn in your life. U-turn. Your life will not be the same anymore. All your friends and family members who have seen you many times and frequently and will start telling you, you are different now. You speak differently, you behave differently, you, be, you move differently. Everything is different in your life. Because the Holy Spirit has come into you and taken control of you. That is why the Bible says, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Let us pray for this anointing of the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters. Many of us are still living in a fear. Even in the family, there is fear. Even in the relationship, we are fear, are frightened. We are frightened to face the realities of our life. We are frightened to face the consequences of our preaching. We are frightened to face the pain and persecutions. We are frightened. We need the Holy Spirit. 
We need the Holy Spirit, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us thirst and pray for this Holy Spirit and he will never disappoint you. He is coming to you. He is coming to each and every one of you. Holy Spirit will come and he is already coming to you. Praise the Lord. Praise. My dear brothers and sisters, the presence of the Holy Spirit that comes into your body is a sign that Jesus is alive. We read like this in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1, verse 3. We read like this, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1, verse 3. We read, after this, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. After his suffering, he presented himself alive. Reflect about this sentence. After his suffering, he presented himself alive. After suffering means after his suffering, passion, death. Now he presented himself alive. My dear brothers and sisters, all those who are suffering, all those who are being persecuted, all those who are going through a tough time, read this word of God in true sense. After his suffering and passion and death, he presented himself alive to them. There is a resurrection for you, my dear brothers and sisters. There is a, risen, there is a resurrection for each and every one of you. This problem that you are facing today will disappear. This sickness that you are having right now will disappear. This crisis that you are going through in your family will disappear. This tension that you are facing right now will disappear. This big problem that you are facing in your daily life will disappear. And you will be able to present yourself alive. You will be able to present yourself glorious. You will be able to present yourself happy. And you will be able to present yourself smiling. Therefore, this is the meaning of Easter today. This is the understanding of the Easter. After his suffering, he, after his pre, our passion and death, he presented himself alive to them. And that, that is why the Holy Spirit is coming to us. Jesus said, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. It is needed that I have to go so that you all will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is resurrected and is gone to the Heavenly Father. Therefore, he is sending the Holy Spirit upon you and me. Let us thank the Lord Almighty. The Holy Spirit is in your life. Holy Spirit is coming to you and taking control of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we were welcoming the Holy Spirit right now. One thing we need to remember, we don't need to welcome the Holy Spirit. Though we say and sing together, welcoming Holy Spirit, that is to make Jesus Holy Spirit comfortable. But at the same time, you know, normally we welcome the guest. We welcome someone who is outsider. And we don't welcome our own family members. When your father comes home back, will you welcome, oh, welcome father, we won't say, and the fa your parents never welcome you when you just go to the shop and come back. He won't, they won't welcome you back. So it's not needed because they are in, in, inmates and those who are staying inside. And, uh, but those guests we welcome, those guests who comes to you, you welcome. But remember, the guest never remains more than two hours or three hours, maybe maximum, maybe one or two days. After that, they will leave. The gust will leave. Holy Spirit is not a gust. Holy Spirit is not a gust and we are not inviting him as a gust. Remember, where there is love of God, where there is faith in Jesus Christ, that is a natural habitation of the Holy Spirit. Where there is love of God and where there is faith in Jesus Christ, where there is love of Jesus that is, that heart is a natural habitation of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit resides there permanently. Holy Spirit comes and takes control of that person permanently.
because that is a natural habitation of the holy spirit and he feels so comfortable and well welcomed and therefore he will be in charge of that house he will take control of that person because where there is faith where there is intimacy with jesus love of god the holy spirit will feel so comfortable and she he finds the natural habitation there for him praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you abba father thank you abba father therefore even when we sing together welcome holy spirit remember if you are a man of god or a woman of god if you have intimacy with god the holy spirit is the one who is singing with you holy spirit is the one who is prompting you to worship god holy spirit is the one who is making you join in this live streaming holy spirit is the one who is acting through you because he found you as a natural habitation for holy spirit for him praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord let's listen to this